I think glamour always stems from a really strong sense of style and the people that I admire who I think are glamorous have a sort of a, a look of their own and they carry themselves a certain way and makeup and hair don't always have everything to do with it. Well, I think it's where well, we all know it's very important for everyone to vote because, you know, everyone sits around and complains, but if they don't put their vote in, then there's really nothing you can say. You know, you have to be a part of the choices that need to be made. And as far as having these awards, you know, whenever people are doing something to make a difference, I think it's important that we recognize them. Tonight, it's my great pleasure to give the Glamour Woman of the Year Award to the Angel of Amphar. And you know, she's also a woman who is much more, much, much more than the sum of her underwear, whether she's wearing any or not. <laughs> Sharon Stone. <laughs> When this terrible plague began, it was very easy for politicians to say, this is a gay disease, and therefore to compartmentalize that. For me, it's a very interesting karmic reality that it is no longer a gay disease, and that 46% of the people living with AIDS are women. You see, that's what happens when you buy into segregation, separateness. I also know that if I was a gay woman, George Bush would not want me to be allowed to have my son. What the hell is he thinking? That means a lot to me because, well, I was really glad that there was a woman general because I'd like to think of this group of women here tonight as an army, small and powerful. We're going to get these things done. It's just the first time I've talked about this since I've been a parent. And it is a very different ball game for me. Can you turn down here, please? And right here, turn it one more time. Sharon. Ladies and gentlemen, one of Glamour, Woman of the Year, Cheryl Crow. Thank Lenny just for being so rock and so cool. He's <laughs> he's my fashion inspiration. Inspiring and who are so passionate about what they do, it makes you want to be a better person. One of the interesting things that I got to watch was these beautiful women who were amputees, who were considered society's trash, are now, because of the VVAF, the Landmine Association, are now able to produce their own silk. They weave silk patterns uh, into scarves that are indigenous to Cambodia. They sell them in the United States for $80 a pop, and suddenly they're able to make $40 a month when $12 is the, the, um, uh, the average income there. They're able to buy land, and suddenly they've gone from society's trash to being very marriable. In fact, men are flocking from all over Cambodia to marry these amputees. So on their behalf, I'd like to accept this award. Thank you. He's got a daughter, he wants to stay. 
Let me say, um, it's such an honor to have Ellen present this to me <laughs> because she is one of my best friends in the whole world, and it's it's you know, it's just it is different to to hear that in front of all these people. But you know, Planned Parenthood is an organization that I have always turned to uh, personally for women's health services, and now look to politically. Um, for reproductive freedom, which we're in, in you know, very, very serious danger of losing. Um, Bonnie and I were just talking about how, how uh, scary it is right now, you know, just these few weeks before the election, and I can only urge each and every one of you to, to think, about, think about the future of the country and, and please vote for Karina's dad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.